Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, me and my homie, James Booker, just got finished watching The Flash 2023, mm -hmm. and we're late watching it, so we've had to endure all the hate fest and the people that don't know what the fuck the word woke means, saying it's woke, blah, 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 and these are our out-of-theater reviews. James, how did you feel just quickly out of the theater before we deep dive? I... I was entertained. I did not expect to go through all the emotions of laughing, and there was a lot of laughing. You know, I enjoyed it. Mm. I don't know what everyone's problem is. I enjoyed it. I had to turn my brain off a bit. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a great film. I'm not saying it's a competently made film. I'm saying I enjoyed it every minute of it. There was nothing offensive or wrong with that movie. It was just entertaining. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this film is the Flash. Worlds collide when Flash decides to go back and try to save his mom. And then he messes up the multiverse of the DC Universe. This film is directed by Andreas Muschietti. Screenplay written by Christina Hobson. And the producer, production design, excuse me, Paul D. Astorberry. And ladies and gentlemen, all the people you wanted to see in this movie have come back in terms of the cast you're yeah. going to get a surprise from michael keaton you're going to get a surprise from your boy that nicholas was superman cage. nicholas cage nicholas that was cage. superman and then you're going to get a surprise from another version of batman your other boy <laughs> a man that was voted the most sexiest man on the planet at one point in time are you talking about clooney tang yeah uh, whatever the women call him george clooney george yes clooney. He made, a, he made his return. And then joining us, ladies and gentlemen, for Supergirl, Sasha Cali. I think she's a British actor. And um, she played her role pretty well as well. F ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, Lamont Tyson has nothing bad to say about this movie except for the dip it took after Act 1. That's the only bad thing I have to say about this movie. You know, you and I both did the same thing about 10 or 15 minutes into the movie. Because the whole opening is a little over the top. But I think you and I both looked at each other and it was like, you know, if they ended right now, I would be happy. That was a great beginning. Yeah. And there was, there were a few brief moments during this movie where you just, it was, you rolled your eyes and be like, get to the point. The audience knows where you're going. Move on. But that's... Every movie ever has done that. It, this was a... I, I'm not going to say it was a great movie. I'm going to say I was entertained at every minute. Every cameo, every bit of fan service, I laughed. Mm -hmm. I was like, I did want to see that. Even if I didn't know I wanted to see it, when I saw it, I was like, you know, I did want to see that. And I got my money's worth because it gave me everything I ever wanted to see. It may not have always made sense at that moment, but I did want to see it. I just lied to my audience. There was one thing I hated about this movie, and okay. I'm going to get there in a minute. All right. But ladies and gentlemen, the opening sequence, the first 20 minutes of this movie <laughs> is absolutely amazing. It is. I mean, unbelievable. This man, The Flash, manages to save crying newborn babies. That... um. I'm going to be sarcastic for a minute, that look totally real during the explosions as the yeah. babies are flying mm -hmm. through the air. Right. Uh, you know, if you if you ever watch some of those X-Men movies with Quicksilver, those scenes are done perfectly. Yep. The ones in this movie, like the Flash doing the same thing, the CGI is awful, and I could not have <laughs> oh been God. happier while watching it. Oh, my I God. I was so happy. <laughs> I, I'm going to do a spoiler right here. <laughs> Guys, he he puts a baby in a microwave, and you're like, "Yeah, he just saved that baby." What? And then, it, like later on, it like it dings, and he's like, "Oh, I have to get the baby out of the microwave." Wait a minute, this happens you in the movie. The, you said the CGI was horrible, but oh, you didn't yeah. care. Well, and I'm saying the CGI. They may have just bought like Cabbage Patch dolls oh, and just tossed God. them up in the air, and like, "Go catch okay. them." Um, no, and, like oh, the, the, the Quicksilver scenes in the X Men movies; those are like perfectly done. And in this. It was, I could not stop laughing. Like, tears were streaming down my face because it's like they took everything that was right about what people have previously done and said, let's do the opposite 
and see how it goes. Wow. And it worked so well. Wow. I could not be happy. <laughs> oh I know it God. sounds like I'm taking a dump on this movie, and I'm really not. I want to encourage everyone to go see it. It is that great. <laughs> what the... F- uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what just happened here, but... but it's so good. But... <laughs> Let me get back still, on mission. And oh this my was god! Like the first ten minutes of the movie. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, this was all early into the movie, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. And then after they got yeah. through Act One, when we finally figured out what was it that Barry Allen wanted, that's when the movie kind of took a little bit of a, a dump. You know, they want you to make movies where it feels like you're on a roller coaster. You're up, you're down, and this one. That down point was a little too down for me. Do you feel like they went, they strung that part out a little too long, James? Yes. In a movie that's all about a guy who goes fast, they slowed way down for way too long. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, as I described it earlier, as the audience, we get it. We know where you're going. Right. This isn't subtle. Right. So right. get to the point and move on. And, and for a movie that was well over two hours well. there's no reason to run anything like that that long People, no mm-hmm. anybody who's going to see this movie wants to see the flash do things quickly with action yeah nobody went into this expecting a tearjerker and they tried they did try for they some did try scenes. they did but that's not what anybody in the audience really wanted okay and ladies and gentlemen i feel like unlike some of the other movies in a dc universe i felt like they did a good job of mixing in the action and the comedy. Maybe not the tear jerkiness, maybe not the the emotional crying effect, but the comedy and the action, I felt like they did a great job and it was well timed. What did you think, James? I think if you go back and listen to our reviews of Shazam, oh, that boy. but the opposite. Yeah. The exact opposite. Like this was legitimately funny. I'm not even certain they were always trying to be funny. Right. And I'm not saying you should laugh to make fun of it. But it's a genuinely good time. They did everything that Shazam was trying to do. Right. You know, the jokes landed. The non-jokes landed. Yeah. It was it was great. Yeah, they did a good job on that part. And the acting, everybody did a good job. Yeah. We enjoyed every single one of the cameos. Yeah. Um, wh- oh, yeah. which, which cameo was the biggest surprise to you? As far... All right. I, I did not know about George Clooney I did not expect that now the moment it starts to happen you're like oh I know who this is going to be but I did not expect the build to that honestly though Nicolas Cage even though it was I mean obviously like a CGI Nicolas Cage I had I think like everybody else I had seen the clips of he was going to be Superman and the picture of him in the costume but that was legitimately entertaining you know that was another I laughed but that was pretty cool I enjoyed the cameo of Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman. Yes. Oh. Well, and, always. And I loved every angle always. the camera showed of her because the camera starts kind of underneath her Wonder woman skirt. When I say this movie is not subtle, at no point do nope. they do anything subtle. No, there is they don't. There is nothing subtle nothing about this subtle. movie. So, parents, there's going to be a lot of cursing. Yep. There's going to be a lot of stabbing. A lot of stabbing. A lot of stabbing. That's not funny. But, man, there was a lot of stabbing. There was a lot of stabbing. It's like they put stabbing on a record loop, okay? Uh, and, you know, stabbings aren't funny, but then when you do it over and over to the exact same character, when yeah. you watch the same character stabbed over and over, at some point it sort of surpasses that threshold and almost gets funny again. Like, oh, they did it again. Look at that. Well, well James, drink. you know I'm sure those dudes I just got finished talking about that don't know how to use the term woke, I'm sure they enjoyed every minute of Supergirl getting stabbed over and over again. For all the wrong reasons. Yeah, for um, all, all yeah. the dumb reasons. No, she was fine. All the actors were fine. I There was nobody who stuck out like, oh, why did they cast you? You make no sense in this movie. Well, James, now that's where oh. I got I to oh. pause it. Oh, We got to discuss this Ezra Miller shit. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Now, now, look, he did a good job in this movie, but yeah. that ain't the point. The crazy stuff he did off camera as a human should not have allowed him to be on this movie. Because had that been Lamont Tyson, 5'7", 215 pounds, that would have done this same shit, I wouldn't even have got a second chance. Probably not. Um... And he's gotten multiple chances. However, he did a good job. 
even though he shouldn't have had this chance. No, he shouldn't. Um, I don't know how much of it was shot before he did the really crazy stuff. I don't know how much of it was shot mm-hmm. after. You know, was this a, we really can't afford to lose this much money? I have no idea. There is a moment about, I don't know, 12 minutes into the movie where he's talking to some other um, character. I don't know if, I don't remember who it was, but he says something to the effect of, this could be a real shock to your system. You might want to get some therapy. Yeah. And I think I laughed and looked at you and said, hey, that that's ironic. Because <laughs> that's what you should be doing, yes. Ezra. <laughs> you know, you, you've got to, if you can separate the 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 person from what goes on in the movie because a lot of people did a great job with they this did. movie. They it should did. not be punished for how out there Ezra got for a while there and probably still is. I have no idea what he's up to now. If you can separate him from it, it really is a fun watch right. of a movie. Right. If you can't, I get it. There yeah, are things I that it. I don't watch because I just can't with that person. Well, yeah, so do you feel like that might be some of the reasons why the box office, rev- the box first weekend box office are low because this was a lower opening than Shazam, and this is by far a better movie than Shazam. What do you think it was, the holiday or a combination of all of it? I honestly believe a substantial portion is Ezra Miller okay. and his antics because okay. everybody knew what was going on, and you know, there's that guilt of going to see it. I, I get it. Yeah. That yeah. there are people, you know, if that's just, it was too much, you can't, hand, you, you're not going to, you go into it saying, I am not going to enjoy this because of him. I get it. I separated it, but. I did too. And I, I was too. entertained. I yeah, laughed. It, it was, it was a good movie. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, and let me give you what I didn't like about the movie. The score wasn't nothing memorable. I'm not going to say I didn't like the score, but it was nothing memorable about the score other than they played the Batman's old songs. I did mm-hmm. like that. Um, we did get a small bit of the Christopher Reeve Superman theme song. I like that. Mm-hmm. But other than that, there was nothing memorable about, memorable about the score. What I really and truly didn't like James, what the hell was the point of that post credit scene? Ladies and gentlemen, don't even wait. <laughs> don't even wait. What the hell was the point of that post credit um, scene? That was the only... It was... There was no point. I. That was truly... You know, we can get this one actor in for a few minutes. And even then, during it, like, most of the time... And... All right. It's Aquaman, right? Yeah, We're it's doing Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, but most of the time, it's just you could tell there was another person on screen with him, because most of the time he's either face down in water or you know he's bent over so his hair is covering his face. So it's like you didn't even there. There was no point. Yeah, there was no I, point. No, we don't see where does that lead. Um, they had every member of the Justice League in this thing except for Cyborg. And except for Superman. Mm -hmm. Well, the Superman from this current version of the DCEU Justice League, and they mentioned Justice League several times, and I guess because, you know, the things that have happened with the actors playing those roles, I guess they was like, we're not going to show your face anywhere in this thing, dogs. Yeah. So, James, now it's time for rankings. It's time for um, how would you rank this movie? On a scale of one to ten, because we know how that's how we do it on my show. Yeah. Personally, the number one thing for me that gauges a movie, with me being a 40 per 40 year old plus person that has a child, <laughs> anytime I go out past seven o'clock and I watch a movie, do I get sleepy any through the movie? And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, I did not get sleepy at all during this movie. Having said that. James, first and foremost, where do you rank this in your top five DCEU films, or did it make the top five? Easily the top five. Okay. It might be coming in at number three. Okay, okay. It might be coming in at number three, and you know, by tomorrow, I might even move it up to number two. I liked Man of Steel. Let me get that out there. Man of Steel may have been my favorite. I like Man of Steel, too. I won't say it's my favorite, but I did like it. I, I like Man of Steel. Uh, Flash was up there. Yeah. I don't expect to see a follow-up movie, mm-hmm. nor did they set one up. Right. Um, 
You want me to give the score now? Yeah, give me the score on a scale of zero to ten. Ten being flawless, zero being that is dumpster oh, trash. Right. So seven feels too low. <laughs> I'm going with an eight. I'm okay. not sure it's an eight out of ten movie, but seven feels like it's not rewarding everything I did like about it. I was entertained. I laughed. I enjoyed it. I gotta go with an eight. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I 100% agree with my homie. That's why we go to these together. Yeah. I give this thing definitely an eight um, because it was very entertaining. It did have a decent storyline. It did get a little slow when present day Flash met past Flash and you had to do a whole lot of teaching. So that got a little slow. But other than that, it picked up steam and it stayed pretty high for me. And in terms of where I would rank this in my DCEU universe list, James, it comes in a hot number two behind the extended version of the Justice League. Okay. The extended version. The extended version. Yes. The good yes. one. Yes. 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 The good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here before yeah. we get into any kind of trouble. James, do you have any parting words you'd like to say to the people? This is this was worth it. I yeah. don't. If you think you might like any DC movie, and you think you're okay to see Ezra Miller in a movie, yeah. this was really worth it. I have yeah. no regrets. Not yeah. not one minute of regrets. Yeah, yeah. It, it, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good movie. Hopefully, this coming weekend will make this thing better than what the box office has showed it to be the first weekend. If not, DC, the fans are telling you, you had a movie, but you got to get rid of the riffraff. You got to stay equal in your punishment of how we're trying to legislate and justify what's right and wrong in this new era. Mm -hmm. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. I will be back with you guys sometime really, really soon. I've been on a kind of little hiatus here. The next movie you might see me and James together for is either Blue Beetle or Oppenheimer. Uh, Get ready for uh -huh. both of those. And until that next sex is hell video, we're out. <laughs>